Let's talk about containers. A container is just a data structure that contains a bunch of data. For example, you might have an array of integers. I'm going to call it integer array. It has 50 integers. I'm going to say index 0 is 0. I'll have a few more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the values are going to match the indexes, just to make it simple. Let's do a little debugging. F9 here. Let's look at our array. As I press F10, you're going to see the values changing. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We can also see that the size of the array is 200. Every integer is 4 bytes. 4 times 50 is 200. Let's pretend that every integer is, uh, is an index for a certain weapon type. In that case, we can see that we, have, we can have the maximum of 50 different weapons. But what if you want more than 50? Or what if you want just 2? In that case, you're either going to have not enough memory or you're going to be wasting memory. Let's try a different way. I'm going to use a data structure called vector. Include vector. And I'm going to say I'm going to use std vector of integers. I'll call it int vec. By the way, this is not a vector in math where you might have a magnitude and a direction. std vector. It's just a block of memory that holds a bunch of data types. Anyways, in order to add a bunch of integers to this data structure, I'm going to use this syntax, push back. I'm going to start from 0. And I'll go maybe all the way up to 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Let's do some debugging. Again, breakpoint here, debugger. I'm going to say int vec. And vector has something called capacity. Notice what happens when I press F10. As you add more stuff to the vector, size and capacity increases. For the array, size is fixed. For a vector, size is not fixed. I'm going to set up a breakpoint right in the beginning. And if I run this, we've already allocated enough memory to contain 50 integers in an array. But let's go to the vector. I'm going to add a few stuff to the vector. And I'm going to get my memory window. Let's look at int vec index 0. We can see that the total capacity for the vector right now is 3. And we can see it in memory here, 1, 2, 3. And each of them is an integer. So an integer has 4 bytes, 1, oops, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's add a few more things, a few more F10s. I'm going to look at int vec index 0 again. And now we can see that the total capacity for the vector is 9. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 blocks of memory. You might also have noticed that the address for the vector has changed. And that is because memory is allocated dynamically depending on how much stuff you put into the vector. So as you add more and more stuff into the vector, new blocks of memory is allocated so that you can have whatever total capacity that you want. 
You see that in this case, right now we have the total capacity of 9 and the size of 7. Allocating memory is an extra step that takes time, so this is done so that you don't have to allocate new memory every time you add something. So now if I press F10 twice, we fill up the capacity. The next time I add one more stuff, we now get a new address. And this time, we have the total capacity of 13. And then the same thing. I fill up the vector all the way to its max capacity. If I add one more, we get a new address and a new capacity of 19. This is useful because you might not know exactly how many weapons you're, you're going to have in a scene. For a typical game, many things happen dynamically. But there's a caveat. You don't really want to allocate memory dynamically in the middle of a gameplay because that is related to your performance. So you might do something like this. There's a function inside a vector called reserve. I'm going to say reserve 20. This is going to set the total capacity of the vector to 20. Let's do some debugging. Okay, if I press F10 now, we haven't put in anything into the vector yet, but the capacity is 20. And here is the address for the vector. Let me add a few things first and then get the address. Okay, now we see that we're not allocating new memory every time we add something. Starting from 21, new memory will be allocated dynamically. Obviously, this is not the only way to contain data. This is just one example. And if you know exactly how many items you're going to need, you might be better off using an array. But it's hard to generalize. Everything depends on your game design and what you're trying to do. The, the takeaway here is that you should understand that there's many different options. And you should try debugging this yourself and understand what's going on in your memory. If you read about this in some human language, which is a translation, there's a good chance that you're going to be confused. But if you do even a little bit of debugging, see memory and data with your own eyes, you're going to have a much easier time understanding things. So for homework, try doing this yourself and also try debugging. And don't just try ints, try other classes. You might also create your own types, like you might have a bunch of enemies. Enemy might have names, HP, whatever. Try putting different objects into different containers. Also Google what other containers there are and what you can do with them. Experiment with them and figure out what's going on in your memory. Okay, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, you can reach me on my Discord server. I have all the links below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.